views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey everybody, it is time for the Bronx Buzz, and I am so thrilled because I have two of my friends, two of my journalism buddies, and uh, they, um, and I'm going to give them applause to start. <laughs> they each won for their respective newspapers four awards at uh, the New York Press Association Awards that were held this past weekend, and uh, so congratulations to Michael Hinman of the Riverdale Press. Thank you. And to David Cruz from the Norwood News. Again, Thank applause. Thank you very much. You should applaud <laughs> David. Oh, yeah, I'll applaud David. David. There you go. <laughs> so you each won four awards. Before we uh, really break it down and look at them, um, wh what is the New York Press Association? What are the awards like? How do you apply? And then uh, you'll get a similar question. Okay. In a moment. <laughs> well, I mean, the New York Press Association is, I mean, every state more or less has their own press association. There's a group of newspapers and uh, um, probably other journalists who might only ever see newspapers like these things. Um, there's about probably 150 of them in NIPA, and uh, well, you know they do, they offer a lot of services for papers like us, like you know libel help and everything else that you can't really get at smaller papers. And um, and once a year we all get together for a big convention and. You know, we spend what four meals going around, mm -hmm. and <laughs> it takes four lunches and four dinners <laughs> to like hand out all these awards. So uh, it goes on for a while. The um, uh, the awards that you get, you apply for them. In other words, you select the stories. Yeah. And, and and so I, I don't know, just to give people a clue, how many did you submit? Did you do you submit a lot of the ones? Hey, what the heck? Let's throw it in there. Or are you real selective about what you submit? Well, you have to be selective. Him because, first, though. Yeah. David, David, <laughs> yeah, yeah, David. David probably did way more than me, but like, <laughs> no, you have to be because it's expensive. I mean, it's not that expensive, but it adds oh, up. For each one, you have yeah, to. Yeah, you got to like, you got to pay so much, and like, you know, and so but sixty you, bucks, seventy five dollars. I don't know if it's that high. It's like, eleven, eleven dollars an yeah. entry. But it 11. adds up. I mean, you know, you do like 30, 40 of them, then you're spending a few hundred bucks, and yeah. uh, you know, it's just. But you are looking for your best because you got to have stuff stand out. You don't want to be that person that has like 50 entries in there. I mean, they limit you anyway. But you you, you want to make sure it is your best of your best, and you want to get things that's going to attract the judges. And so, for you and for the Norwood News, do you, have you sub did you submit a lot of them? Did you submit a few of them? I, I mean, how do you? Um, and, and, and let me just add for folks sure. who don't know. The um, uh, the nice thing I think ab about it, it's not only a nice story or a good story. It's for photographers. It's for design, which both of you know very well because we're going to talk about exactly what you want. So, go ahead. Uh, uh, what do you? Submit? So yeah, I'm I'm pretty selective these days. I mean, they have about 65 categories for the the NIPA awards, and so you know, in the beginning when I was first starting out in Norway News, I, I like, how long ago is that, by the way? Like, more than four years ago. Okay. Of the He's 65, only been there for, what, a year? A year. A year yeah. to live that of, the, uh, of the 65, I would probably put it in for double that, probably 30. But these days, I'm, you know, I'm pretty selective. We, you know, for us, we, we really just focus heavily on editorial side, more so than anything else. You know, we didn't put anything for advertisements or design or anything like that. We just sim simply went with editorial, which boiled us down to about 11 categories, which is good because then you can kind of can focus on which ones really you think will make the cut. So let's do the two first place awards. <laughs> David is so proud of his award. I'm going to hold it up. We should have you hold it up. But uh, David, you got uh, the first place for a news story. Now, what is that five on there? Five is uh, the uh, division that we're in. Right, they, because they, there would be no point in comparing, for example, to the Times or something. Well, the Times would be fair. Well, no, the right. Times will well, be another, if, like, say, it goes by circulation. That's how they, they put right. place you on the division or Division 5. All right, so this, that well, was let's the, see, this is the story, That right? was Can it, yes. it? <laughs> So this was the actual, this is the first place for, I guess, Division 5 for a news story. Um, you wrote this. Correct. What was what was good or great about this story? Basically, the uh, the gist. Uh, of the let story. me just add. This is a rent roll story, and it uh, appeared in March uh, a year ago. Correct. Two thousand seventeen. Go ahead. Uh, essentially, the gist of the story is the fact that there's a, sit a state agency that's essentially really understaffed to the point where they almost never check these um, forms called rent histories, where a landlord submits it to the state to tell the state how much a tenant had paid. And so sometimes a tenant who's moving into the uh, uh, a building doesn't realize how much a previous tenant had paid. And so a landlord could just write, you know, $1,200 and, 
you know. So, so the revelation correct. was one of the, the things about it, that you reported something that nobody had known. Uh, did you think it was a good story? Because <laughs> sometimes... Uh, actually, I, yeah, I did think it was did. a good story. The thing is, I wish I could have gone, I could have probably gone even double the, the word count of, uh, of, this, of this story, which was... Because you had a lot more material. A lot more material in there. It's very, very interesting. The state agency, DHCR, is a very, very understaffed agency, almost to the point where they really can't keep track of like the number of buildings. I, I'm always interested in the creative process, not only for journalists, but for artists and, and whatever. When you were writing it, did you say, this is a really good story? Or was it just you know, like the pressure of the day? I got to finish the story. I Let's remember when I actually it. wrote that story. You that story was, was in story? A, during a snowstorm. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, so you had the time to I do it. I had the time to, because it it's very complicated. It's somewhat nuanced, and I thought it was really, it was a good, decent story for me to put up there. Um, Michael, the uh, Riverdale Press has a, a storied history with the New York Press Association Awards and, and always wins, has won award over the years. This uh, was a first, uh, a pri first place uh, prize uh, for you, Richie Stein, and Mika Fishlin. Mika, yeah, Mika, Mika Fishlin. Mika Fishlin yeah. for overall design. This is uh, the current paper that just came out today. Um, what, what, what about the design continues to attract? If I, my memory serves correctly, this isn't the first design award that the... Well, I mean, it, well, it's funny that one of the recipients of the award is actually what the award is named after. It's actually called the Richard L. Stein oh, Design Award That's of Excellence. Fair. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. And I guess like, um, <coughs> sorry, I went this long without coughing. Um, I, I guess it's funny because the paper hasn't really submitted for this award since they named it after Richie. And, that's, uh, yeah, that's not fair. And, uh, but it's not that, <laughs> but, it's, but I mean, it's judged by people in Michigan. They don't know who Richie is. They don't know right. any of these things. And, you know, but to me, it's just, you know, we work really hard on the look of our paper. And, you know, they, I was brought in as a design editor. Um, you know, the, you don't see me write as much as maybe other editors do because I'm laying like out the, the paper. Sitting to your yeah, left. David writes a lot. You know, <laughs> I used to write a lot as an editor. You but have a different staff. It's a different yeah, situation. It's a different situation. So I get to lay out a lot, and my thing is, you know, is is packaging it in a way that that makes it attractive, that people want to look at, and that um, that makes it easy to find stuff. So. If I remember correctly, now I didn't uh, see the de any details about it, but if I remember correctly, they. What they liked in the past was, you know, the layout that you could see all the news and then as you go into it, it's easy to find the follow-ups because all the follow-ups are on one page. I have to tell you, I hate it. Maybe that's why nobody reads print anymore. But I hate it when, uh, you know, this one is here and then you got to go to the last page and you got to yeah, find it. It's, it's a well-organized, it's always been a well-organized Well, organized I mean, in a standard idea for newspapers that you'll see now, especially community papers, is that you really don't want to jump from one page to another page and that's it. Like, you don't want to jump anywhere else. You don't want to keep jumping stories. So, so when you see stories on the inside of the paper, for instance, they're held to the page, what we would call it. Like, they don't jump anywhere. And we do that so that... Um, you know, so that you don't have to keep looking around. Like the front page, yes, because you want to fit some stuff in there. But everywhere else, if you flip through the paper, you're pretty much stuck right on that page. Everything's right there. So it makes it easier to All right, now we're going we're gonna to go down the line here. So then um, reporter Zach Castro, who was featured on uh, the Bronx Buzz just, I don't know, uh, last week, the week before, I can't even remember, uh, who is a relatively new reporter, mm -hmm. won uh, third place for best news story about that story on uh, Fort Independence Houses, which I thought was an excellent story. Oh, the election, yeah, the precinct, yeah. No, 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 this was the, oh, the voting precinct. Yeah, the voting Ford. precinct. Of yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about that story. Yeah, we, um, we would send our reporters and photographers out to, uh, you know, as our way of kind of overseeing the elections as part of like our, our job as oversight as, right. as journalists. So I would send a photographer out, you know, we'd get permission in advance from the executive director of the elections board and go out and shoot. Well, during the primaries, we had two precincts that wouldn't let us in. So we did a story on that. We thought we had it resolved. The first place was resolved on the general election, but Fort Independence Houses wasn't. And it was such a mess that the executive director came all the way from Brooklyn on election day to come and deal with this. And it was just, it was a mess. Uh, and uh, by law, you're, you're allowed to be allowed in, I'm presuming. Well, we, we, you had, know well, we the had permission. We, we, had, we, we had possessed the... a letter that gave us permission to go in as journalists. So um, as, as a reporter, it's almost like you're in the right place at the right time. The story developed in front of you. And uh, uh, he, I'm assuming, did a good job chronicling it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and that was a tough one because there was a lot going on. And, and it's tougher to do stories if you're somewhat involved. Like, usually reporters were, were observers. Were 
we're standing outside looking in. But every once in a while, there's a story like this where it's talking about freedom of the press or talking about public access to certain things like precincts and voting that, you know, sometimes you have to be somewhat involved. You in the also, story. this did not win an award, but I remember the recent story that I think a Riverdale Press reporter wasn't allowed in a public meeting, which was, right, wasn't there? Yeah, that was last year, I think, yeah, late last yeah. year. Okay. See, my memory is still, it's still. We still can't get into that away. meeting, so. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I want to run him down. Whoa, I want to run him down, and then we'll uh, have David's uh, uh, Norwood News uh, as well. Um, uh, Julius Constantine Model, who was uh, here uh, on, on the show as well, um, he's a photographer, but this was a story, he got an honorable mention for a story that was also featured. In, yeah, he had a feature show. story about, he. what he did is, you know, one of the things we like to do in community news is that, you know, we can't ignore things that are happening nationally and internationally, and so he really wanted to do something about the Rohingya, which is kind of an ethnic group that's been kind of marginalized and they've been refugees and everything else. So what he did is he found some local connections, some local angles. And I mean, he's a photographer, but he's also a fantastic writer. I mean, it's one of those lucky, you, know, you get both both into one package, we know, well, with him. Lucky for you, yeah. but skillful on his. This yeah. is not luck. He's a wonderful guy. He's, he's wonderful, guy yeah. And a great guy. I mean, he yep. was, for folks who don't know, he was on the show and it was just a delight to have him. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that was one, and then the fourth, uh, sports editor uh, Sean Brennan mm -hmm. uh, won an award, uh, honorable mention for a sports feature on um, uh, the uh, High School for American Studies baseball coach. Yeah, the coach, I think, was it Pete Nazari, I think is his name? That's his name, yep. Yeah, you know, he... Uh, he came back, and, and, and it's funny, I was just talking to Sean about it today, when Sean first started in journalism back in 1985, he's, he's been any longer than me, um, he's like one of the, he covered a, a, a prep beat for the New York Daily News, and so one of the first coaches he ever met was Pete Nazari, so it was kind of oh, a fun so that, thing. That makes, it, uh, that makes it easier. Yeah, so it's kind of fun, so he's going to cover him again this weekend, too. All right, this is going to be a funny question. How much credit, if any, does or should the editor take for the fact that your reporters turned in good work? And, and, and be truthful, I, I'm interested in having people learn about what the process is. How much input do you have in what it turns out? Well, I mean, I think a good newsroom is a collaborative effort. So, you know, reporters come in and reporters have to have very significant skills, but I also think that you have to have good editing. You know, like you have to have somebody kind of direct the ship and, you know, get the stories and, and work with the reporter. This is, you know, for me, when I edit stories, it's not like I just edit and I send back a bunch of red lines and like, here it is. It's a collaborative process. It's like, you know, let's work on it. If it's something that needs a little more work, we look at that and we put it together so that the final product comes out great. All right, we're, we're going to take a break. Don't worry, David Cruz of the Norwood News, <laughs> which rhymes. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we'll t run down your, your thing uh, in just a moment. Um, same question that I asked David when he wrote the story. Were you aware as these were being turned out and as you were working on them and collaborating on them that these were great stories or that these could be award winners or it never came up? I mean, I don't think about it that way. I think about it each week when we put the paper together. Like, how do we get it to where are we get our readers happy? I'm more focused on what our readers are happy about, what we can do to keep covering our community properly, right, and the awards are awards. That's the attitude. <laughs> All right, we'll find out if David Cruz has the same attitude. I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. I'm sure he well, does. We'll find out. We'll be right back. Uh, more of the Bronx Buzz. Michael Hinman of the Riverdale Press. David Cruz of the Norwood News. Don't go away. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, yeah, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Oh, 
Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I do not love him. All right, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. You should hear what we're talking about when the camera is off, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, David Cruz, uh, let's talk about it. So you won the first place, and then you um, work with an incredibly talented photographer, Addy Talwa. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about, uh, listen, Addy's been a, a friend for many years, and we've had him on, on various shows. Tell me about what makes him a great photographer and great news photographer. Adi definitely has a journalist mind when it comes to taking photos, not just sending him to an assignment and he just starts snapping away. He kind of really thinks deeply about the subject. He thinks very deeply about the composition of a, of a, a subject, almost to the point where sometimes he would come in advance, like an event, where a venue to just to scope out the place to see where the best well, uh, angle how, is. How rare that is for a, a news <laughs> yeah. photographer. Usually they run they in. They just and run in and start <laughs> taking photos, but he... He's like, what time is it? Do you think that they'll let me in at like, you know, if it starts at six, do you think they'll let me in at five? Just so I could see what's going on. But he definitely won a very well-deserved, um, you know, award for photographer of the year. He really treats his photos it was like third place. It was third clear. place, and it was I think it was that's very impressive. stiff competition, to be honest well, with you. Some of these, yeah, that's impressive. You know, some of these, and, uh, out of how many newspapers or how many photographers? It was 20, 20 entries to that wow. award, if I remember correctly. Uh, you brought in um, while we were talking because then he won a second one. Uh, let's see, the first one was. Well, he won a third place uh, feature photo. A feature photo. Which was a fantastic picture. I, I want to just show the picture that you pointed oh, out. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. He, uh, uh, David, uh, as we read the newspaper together, as we always do on the show, <laughs> uh, this photograph, I don't know, can we get it nice and close, guys? I don't know if we can get it. <laughs> this and, well, pick up the Norwood News and you can see it. This photograph is just an extraordinary photo. I have been to events that look like very simple, you know, a panel discussion or something. And then you look and, and there's Addy like up, up on the attic somewhere or he's got a <laughs> ladder and he gets an angle that nobody else gets. It really helps, the, and you know design, helps give the Norwood News great distinction, I think. Yeah, and we're really, really proud of him because he works extremely hard. Um, I thought it was interesting that the, the shooting at Bronx Lebanon Hospital, that horrible tragedy, uh, you um, got an honorable mention a prize in spot news category, um, but that's not really even in your... No. So that, that was kind of interesting. You, yeah. and, and why would you have covered that story? Well, because it was I, so big. It was so big, the severity of it was just crazy. Just the very idea of, uh, of a you know, <coughs> doctor Sorry. going, essentially going crazy and just right, shooting right, up the right. place. Well, it was just course, something yeah. we couldn't ignore. And how often does a mass shooting happen in the Bronx very rarely? What was... Uh, once is too once often. Is too often. What, what was distinctive about your coverage that made it worthy of uh, um, Just actually, when, uh, after we won it, I always like to go back and read the, uh, the award-winning story to see what made them... Uh, <laughs> what was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what made it you know, a remarkable story. I think in, in our case was the fact that, well, I ended up just going there as it, as it happened, and so I was talking to a lot of staffers who gave me very vivid accounts of uh, what was going on in, inside. And uh, some of them were a little bit, you know, 
like nervous, understandably, to talk, but I think it was cathartic on their part to actually just speak and uh, say whatever was on their mind, and um, that was because that's what made it. Uh, because obviously, <clears throat> every newspaper covered it, every TV station covered it, and so congratulations for getting recognition. All right, let's talk uh, before we run out of time. Let's talk about what's in the papers. Uh, right, and right now, uh, the Norwood News is out. They do every two weeks. Um, the Bailey House of Horrors. What do you want to tell us about? I actually want to talk about this little <laughs> sure, story. Sure, whatever you This want. little story, uh, <laughs> talking about the uh, Kingsbridge National Ice Center, uh, and, and you uh, got a little story here about that, well, it's, they still say it's going to happen, but not this week. <laughs> yeah, no, not this week. And I think the reason, uh, we, we decided to run with that story primarily because this is the first time it came straight from the, the horse's mouth, the founder of the Kingsbridge National Ice Center, telling community stakeholders that, hey, we have an eight to ten month window until we, you can actually see a shovel in the ground. And from the way people describe Kevin Parker, the founder of Koenig, he essentially is a man who does, he only speaks and says things if he knows he's 100% sure it's going to happen. And so the very idea that he had an actual time frame in mind was kind of like, news almost and like a, a, an advancement. To, Correct. And, and I have to say, uh, I judge maybe not as technically as the people at the New York Press Awards, but nobody else had that story. You've been following it. Obviously, it's right in your community. And so, to my mind, it's award winning when we see a revelation for something that everybody wants to know about. And, and so, congratulations, David, yeah, no, for, for that. Uh, what else is there? And then we're going to go to the Riverdale Press. Uh, what else you got this week? Well, we oh, I think this is an interesting story. I'm sorry. I'm not going to ask him. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to be the editor of my own show. Um, this is interesting. We, we saw that Mercy College opened a food pantry uh, recently, and now Marshall Montefiore Community Center is opening a food pantry. Uh, tell me about this. This is an well, interesting. Well, you thing. know, Norwood is, uh, I, I'm not sure 100 people know, but it's, it's essentially kind of like a working poor community these days, as far as I can tell. I mean, it used to be very um, middle class working Class, but it's not uh, so these days and so people are struggling harder to pay rent these days and so you know they have these social service programs that help kind of just subsidize their you know just expenses such as food and so MMCC knowing their tar the demographic tends to be very working poor decided to open up this food and, and how does this work people go in and get literally get free food they they'll get, get not cost. right dry goods dry foods that they can easily just get from the uh, the pantry it's open I believe it is open five days a week. I'm not 100% sure. And they got the, they are able to uh, distribute the food because of a grant or something. They like got that? a they got a an allocation from Councilman Andrew Cohen. Uh, oh, there you go. It, so. Good people working together. We we like that. <laughs> uh, and for the Riverdale Press, uh, this uh, Charles Maudler, um, who is kind of a, a known figure, an important figure in the Riverdale for many years in Community Board Eight, uh, he stepped down uh, from his uh, position as chair of the Land Use Committee. Yeah, something I think he's held for decades at least. I mean, at least 30-something years, probably even longer. And, uh, yeah, kind of an abrupt exit. So we're still trying to get to the bottom of it. We're, we we know, don't know why he did it. Well, I mean, we you know we know what the official line is, but the official line doesn't make sense to us. So we're going to keep exploring until we find mm. something that makes sense to us. Uh, you know, it's almost like a, a, a double-deck uh, blow to the um, community board, still operating without a district oh. manager, which means yeah. it's not really that effective. You want to? Yeah, I just want to interject. It's just so funny that uh, he ended up resigning because community board seven's chair unexpectedly resigned as well. Who was that? Adeline uh, Walker. When was that? That was on Tuesday. Wow. But that so you got to get that paper out. I, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> but that That's was, a big story. We think there was political pressure uh, taking place um, you know, behind the scenes. She said that they wanted to spend right. time with her family, but just like this one I'm hearing, uh, Michael speak you, about you this. You get suspicious about that kind of thing. If politicals are at play, you know. Um, we were, I, I think you would have to think that the community board is operating at kind of less uh, uh, effectiveness without a district manager, somebody to receive all the calls and yeah, input Yeah, I mean, they have other staff there, which kind of helps. So they, they, I mean, they all have to make up for that. And I think Rosemary Ginty, who's the chair, is doing, you know, is, is doing what she can to kind of hold things together. But the biggest thing that's happening with us is that, you know, the Hebrew home at Riverdale, which is the big, you know, the big retirement community, they're looking to expand into uh, continuing care uh, retirement communities, which don't exist in New York, at least in New York City, you know, which are CCRCs. They want to build off their campus, and it's, like, about to start the process, like, next month. 
where there's like two land use committee meetings that's going to be heavily attended. It's a wow. big controversial issue. Mm. And now you've lost the, the pillar of this committee who's supposed to help you know, spearhead everybody through this process. He's not there right so now. So somebody from the committee presumably will get the chair? Well, I, we don't know. Be, I, mean, well, I, I think it'll be the vice chair, Dan Patternack, who's a, who's a previous chair to the right, CBA. So he's, so. Uh, and well experienced, et cetera. Yeah. The other story, and I'm, I told you I'm going to tell you the story on air. So I go to Staples. This goes back, I don't know, four or five years. I go to Staples. I shop at Staples. I park. This is on uh, 233rd or 234th and Broadway. I park in the parking lot there. I put the stuff in the car. I want to run across the street to Garden Gourmet and get some groceries. I meet a friend in the street, so it takes me an extra five minutes because we stop and we chat. When I come out of Garden Gourmet, my car is not there, and somebody said, I just saw, I, at that time I had a red car, I just saw a red car up, uh, you know, being being driven away. The Porsche, yeah. But, yeah, and the guy, the the guy who who was commandeering it was standing there, and he came over to me. He says, "Oh, was that your car?" I said, "Yeah." He says, "It'll cost you whatever the I don't know the dollar amount, one hundred fifty dollars, uh, to to get it down." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You've got to pay me one hundred fifty dollars cash." I said, "Well, I don't have one hundred fifty dollars cash in my pocket." He said, "Well, go to an ATM because if you don't." Then uh, we're going to tow it away, and then you have to go, and it'll cost you. You got to go to the South Bronx to the tow pound, and it'll cost you two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars to get it back. Well, I don't know what the law. So, is. so they yeah. literally, you know, bribed me right on the spot, blackmailed me on the spot. I went to the local bank, well, I picked up the money, and I got my car. Back. I mean, I don't know what the laws were then, because this is what the '60s we're talking about. But um, you know, <laughs> He's I'm joking. So nice. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, five years. Five, no, but six five. Years but ago. I mean, but now, like, if that happens, so if they if they haven't taken the car to the yard, you know, it's still there. They can do what they call a drop. So the drop is that they can drop it. It has to be half of the cost of what it would take if, if you had gone all the way down to the yard. But they are also supposed to take two. Like they're supposed to take credit cards and everything else. Yeah, how could you? So it can't just some, be cash. Yeah, and what if, what if you know I didn't happen to have that money in my account yeah. or have access to it? Then you know, um, the other thing that was disturbing, I did go shop at Staples. I mean, I had shown. I went into the store. But I once said, you Look, leave, though, but once you I leave, know, then know. that's that's where they get you. That's where I the know. law protects. So now them. the reason I bring it up is there's a store here, uh, a story here in the Riverdale Press that came out. Uh, today mm -hmm. uh, about uh, uh, these predatory uh, tow truck operators. Give us, uh, tell me, wrap it up. Wait, we're starting the show just now. It was Gary's story. <laughs> All right, real yeah. quick. No, it's my but, story that took well, so long. Well, Assemblyman <laughs> Jeffrey Dinowitz has introduced uh, legislation that will, you know, that if it passes, will allow people who feel like they've been wronged by tow companies to not just sue, but also to put liens against their property. So they, the tow companies can't go and like change their name and transfer their assets to another name, oh. but they can't be sued. This is, this would, if you put a lien, it would stop them from being able to transfer. Wow. So that's basically Listen, that in a nutshell. You guys are great. Uh, clearly, we could do three-hour shows with you. Congratulations <laughs> on the first place. Next hold it time, up. Yeah, hold it up. There you go. Mine Next looks time. like that, too, just FYI. <laughs> it just has your name on it or, or the paper. Yeah. Name, yes. Uh, congratulations once again. Michael Hinman, Riverdale Press. David Cruz, Norwood News. And to you and to them, uh, we're going to do a show about gun violence on Bronx Talk Monday night. We're going to talk to some of the young kids who marched uh, during that march a couple of weeks ago. Good night. See you around.